Good evening. We'll get started in a little bit. Um, I was never given Purdue's post-game Zoom link, so I apologize for that. So if you're going to the Iowa basketball media page looking for Purdue's post-game Zoom link, I never received that from their SID, so I apologize. Um, but just want to give you a heads up on that. We will have a ASAP transcript tonight of coach only. So we'll have coach followed by two players.
I don't have exactly a great place. <clears throat> Good evening, Fred. How are we doing tonight? Good. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, Can you hear one me? sec. Let me bump up the volume. All right. Coach, congratulations. We'll go ahead and start uh, with questions. If you have a question for Coach McCaffrey, please raise your hand. Our first question comes from David Eichholt. Go ahead, David. Yeah, friend, you guys uh, yesterday were hammering home the points of rebounding, hustle, and defensive effort. What did you like out of your guys tonight? It was by far our best effort on the glass and defensively. Uh, I thought we were pretty good, really good, actually, against Carolina. We were locked in. But, uh, you know, we out-rebounded them, which is hard to do. Purdue is always uh, a terrific rebounding team. They run a lot of stuff uh, and they execute extremely well, always have. Uh, so we had to stay connected and we had to keep the effort and intensity. Uh, so I think, you know, you look at what the game plan was coming in, you know, it was defense and rebounding. And it was, you know, probably our best effort of the year. And then we turn around and have, you know, 21 assists on 20, 24 field goals. So that was also impressive. Our next question comes from Chad Leistico. Hi, Fran. Uh, yeah. What especially did you like about Joe Wieskamp uh, tonight? That was his best uh, well, game I against thought, Purdue. You know, I thought in the first half, seven rebounds when we really needed I mean, I thought he was really active on the glass. I thought he, he moved without the ball extremely well. Seemed like he was always open. He was cutting hard and finishing and – getting fouled, uh, you know, he, he, he had a really good game Saturday offensively, defensively, uh, not so much. And I'm not blaming him because everybody else wasn't so good either. But uh, I think what this game shows is the character of Joe Wieskamp. You know, and we said, okay, we didn't do some things that we should have done on Saturday. We have to correct them and learn from that and make the necessary changes and, and, and they did. And Joe was right at the forefront of all that. Very proud of him. Mike Haas, our next question. Fran, I don't know how much stock you put in the plus minus stat, but CJ Frederick was a plus 25 and just uh, overwhelmingly the leader there. Uh, what would you take away from his game tonight? Well, you know, CJ is a complete player. So his defense was, was spectacular. OK, so it starts with that. And then, you know, he, he makes shots. He moves without the ball. He makes plays off the dribble. He recognizes when teams are flying at him or when they're overplaying him. You know, essentially, he's always in the right place and he's always making the right decision. And, you know, from the first time I started watching him play, he, he's never been a mistake guy. He's not, you know, and I use that a lot, but. A lot of guys aren't, you know, they, they, they make mistakes. They make bad decisions. They put their heads down and drive into traffic. And he just constantly makes the right decision. And he always puts winning first. Derek, go ahead with your question. It's not just um, 11 minutes tonight, only one shot, but he was able to get four assists. How important is it um, for somebody like him to come in and lead the bench just that unselfish play? You know, I thought we, you know got, I thought we got great play off the bench across the board. He was terrific, as you pointed out. But, uh, you know, I think the beautiful part of this team is that when we go to the bench, you know, we, we get production. Jack Nungy, Keegan Murray, Joe Toussaint, Patrick. Uh, and as I keep saying, I can go deeper if I have to. I really have confidence in those other guys. Josh Christensen. Fran, as um, <clears throat> Luca continues to uh, keep climbing up the uh, career points uh, board at Iowa, I, I'm just curious, um, with all the players that you've coached in your career, how does Luca kind of 
separate himself from the rest of the pack with just his consistency and always, I guess, finding ways to get better like we saw this summer and just it, it doesn't matter who he's playing. Well, I think, you know, as I look at, you know, as you mentioned, some of the guys that I've coached over the years, I've coached some, some really good ones. Uh, the thing that I'm impressed with Luca the most is who he's doing it against uh, and recognizing that every team is scheming completely to stop him. So, like I thought tonight, I mean, we had open looks because he, he loaded people up in and out. Uh, he made good decisions when he shot it. You know, he, he was really good defensively and on the glass. Uh, sat for a little bit with that third foul and he got him back in there and he was able to finish. So, uh, you know, he's a guy that he continues – to try to perfect his craft. And it would have been easy to be satisfied with his freshman and sophomore. He was terrific. Now he wanted to be, he was good. He wanted to be great. So now he became great. Okay, well now I've arrived. No, I want to be a first round draft pick. And, 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 and that's what you love about this kid. Mark Emmert. Yeah, Fran, you talked about that stretch without Luca there. You, you guys actually increased your lead by two points, I guess. What did you see in that, in that five minutes that really encouraged you? Well, first of all, great, great energy. You know, we had activity, so we had fresh guys come in, uh, and we got some buckets. Patrick hits a three, Keegan dunks, Joe's pushing the ball. You know, Jack had some buckets, uh, but, you know, defensively he's a presence and he rebounds in traffic. Uh, so, uh, you know, I really like that group, and they've been pretty – pretty good and solid in every area every time I put them in. Don Doxy. Yeah, Fran, it, you mentioned this is your best uh, defensive game of this season, but for 40 minutes, this has got to rank as, as one of the better games you guys have played defensively in the last few seasons, don't you think? Or? Yeah, yeah, probably, you know, because you know, we, 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 we played a really good team that executes extremely well, that has athletes and shooters and post players. You know, I thought, I thought uh, you know, our ball pressure was, was the best it's been. Ted Lysico. I guess just curious, uh, you know, players, how the players are feeling in the locker room after that. I mean, that uh, wasn't a shootout like usual. Uh, they feel pretty good about kind of grinding one out. Yeah, I, I think that they were uh, they were fairly businesslike and professional. I mean, they were obviously happy uh, because the games come quick now, Chad. Right? I mean, we we play Friday, uh, you know, so we played Saturday. You know, you got two days to get ready. And you play Tuesday. You got two days to get ready. Uh, so the professional side of this processing a game plan, executing a game plan, and then kind of flushing it and then starting over and then do it again and again and again and again because the games are coming quick because we left some time at the end of the season in case we have to reschedule. So I think a team's ability to be that mature and professional is going to be absolutely critical. And I, and I couldn't be more impressed with how professional they've been the last two days. Mike Kloss, go ahead. Al, I was just going to ask you that. I mean, uh, no matter win or lose, it would, a lot of teams, I, I would guess, would have some sort of emotional hangover after Saturday. Uh, clearly, yours did not. Why not? Well, you know, I think it's a, it's a, it's a couple reasons, Mike. Uh, our approach has always been to play the game, analyze the game, be honest with each other, make some adjustments, make some improvements, and that's collectively and that's individually. We had some guys had some, some serious defensive breakdowns that shouldn't have had them. And we pointed out to them. We don't belittle them. We don't scream and yell. But we, we show it to them so they can see it, and then we drill it, and then we put the game plan in. And, and, and the really good players and the really mature guys and really intelligent guys understand that 
and they benefit from that approach. So, so that's kind of what we did. Uh, we, we don't let it linger. You know, let's say, Mike, we won the game. You know, we, the last two days, everybody, you know, we'd have been ranked number one. Everybody's been saying how great we are. And we've got, a, we, we've got a battle Purdue. We know what playing Purdue is like. I mean, they kicked us twice last year. So I think a team's ability to understand that is going to be the key to success for the rest of the season. Josh Christensen. And kind of sticking with uh, with Mike's question a little bit, with how much we've talked about how special this team is. I mean, with how impressed you were with how they were able to move on from Saturday, would it, I don't know how to phrase this, I mean, would it have been different with any other team? Because we talk about how special this team is and the talent it has and and, and what we feel this team can do. I mean, would it have been different with another team? Or uh, it, it, it would have been different for other teams. You know, I, I've had some other teams that I think could have handled it. But I think you started to see it last year with this group, you know, the core group of guys we have, uh, you saw it, you know, they, they understood how to play on the road, how to play back to back, how to play with, you know, we didn't have the depth we have now last year, you know, so really a lot fell on the shoulders of Luca and Connor I mean, you know, CJ and Joe, I mean, you know, we, we didn't have a lot of depth. We had three guys who went to the side with injuries. So uh, this team is special in that regard. Uh, I think we all would have expected them to be, you know, uh, they're, they're veteran guys. They've been through it. It's different. You know, it, it, tonight we would have, you know, and Saturday as well, it would have been an, an insane atmosphere, but it wasn't. So it really I think forces you to have that kind of maturity, you know, coming down to stretch, you know, we had a 15 point lead and they scored five quick ones. And then we missed three or four possessions in a row, but well, you got to go down and get stops or that lead's going to be gone. And we got stops and we, and we didn't panic, you know, we missed a couple in a row. It's not like we're never going to score again. We're going to score. And we did. So, uh, you know, that's, I think what these guys know and understand, and and that's the approach that they take on a daily basis themselves. All right, coach. Thank you for your time this evening. Thank you guys. We'll get right to our player interviews here in just a minute. <clears throat> All right, good evening, Luca. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. All right, to, right to questions for Luca Garza. If you have a question, please raise your hand. Our first question comes from Chad Leistico. Go ahead, Chad. Hi, Luca. Um, how would you ex uh, explain the difference between this Purdue game and past Purdue games for your team? You know, I think in the past we've gotten out hustled and out rebounded. I believe they're a team that prides themselves on winning the war on the boards and, and getting the 50 50 balls. And, and tonight, you know, we showed a tremendous effort on the glass. And we knew that was a focus, um, you know, especially coming off the Gonzaga game where we felt we could have done a way better job on the glass. So, we know this is one of the best rebounding teams in the country and one of the best teams in the country. You know, they're, they're really, really good. So it's an impressive win for us and an, and an impressive effort um, in multiple areas. What is it? What would it, would you say it says that you don't have to win every game, you know, a hundred to 90 or 99, 88 or whatever. Definitely. You know, being able to win, you know, a game, you know, in the first half, we were like six of 18 from three and we didn't shoot the ball, you know, that great. Um, but we were able to get stops, and, and, and get in transition and score. Uh, but, you know, we can play in multiple different ways. You know, I think 
and we have the confidence that scores to, to push the ball and make the game a lot faster. And I think in this game, we, we grinded it a little bit more. Um, they obviously have a really good defensive team. Um, so they were, you know, making it tough on us. Um, so, you know, it was just a good effort uh, all around. Our next question comes from David Eichold. Go ahead, David. Yeah, Luca, what was the biggest difference for you guys defensively just from Saturday to tonight? What was just working so well for you? you know, I think there was a lot of communication, uh, obviously rebounding. You know, I think a lot of times, even in the Gonzaga game, we'd, we'd get a you know, good stop. We'd force a missed shot. Um, but if you don't get the rebound, you know, it doesn't really count for anything. So, you know, I think the, limiting the one shot um, just helped us a ton. You know, this team prides themselves off getting second shots, and it, it, it's what fuels their offense. And, you know, when they beat teams, um, they usually out rebound them. So we knew, you know, we could get stops um, and we had just to secure the rebounds. And we did that. And I'm just really proud of our guys tonight. Josh Christensen. Luca, how much did you guys want to prove that there was not going to be a hangover from from Saturday's loss? I know that you guys said that you were you were all focused on Purdue. I mean, how much did you want to show that as much as you guys wanted to beat the number one team, you still feel that you can, but it, it's it, you're it, you're not focused on that. You completely have basically pushed that game aside. Yeah, I mean, we're a veteran team. You know, we, we know what it's like to to take a loss and and have a short, you know, um, you know, kind of stretch into the next game. So we knew we had to flush it, uh, watch the film, learn from it, and take those things into the next game and kind of take it out on the next team. You know, I, I think we did that tonight at, at a really high level. You know, our ability to defend and get rebounds tonight uh, was one of the best you know performances we've had. Um, so I'm just really proud of our guys, you know, and, 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 and the way we rebounded tonight. Chad Lystico. Hey, Luca. Uh, I remember talking to Joe Wieskamp after last year's game. He's very frustrated. Uh, what did you see from him tonight that maybe you hadn't seen in the past against Purdue? Um, you know, I, I think, you know, his – his job on the glass tonight was, you know, tremendous. He had seven boards in the first half. Uh, I took a couple towards the end, so he didn't get ten. But, you know, I, I, he did a great job the whole game, and he was just, he was really tough. And when he plays that strong and that aggressive, you know, no team can guard him, and, and he just makes him a whole different player and makes us a whole different team. So, you know, I, I think, you know, it, it was one of his, you know, better and tougher performances that I've seen. So I'm, I'm really proud of him, and he's going to continue to do that all year. David Eicholt. Yeah, Luca, just to kind of follow up on that. I mean, just what have you seen from Joe just in terms of what, what's the mentality shift been like for him? Is there anything you can kind of put your finger on? No, honestly, um, you know, it, it kind of reminds me of myself and my growth, you know, sophomore to junior in terms of the mental, um, you know, challenge of the game. You know, it, it's a lot playing at this level. And I think, you know, his ability to come in and out or, or every single night and perform like he's been performing, you know, it's a credit to him. And, and I've definitely seen the similarities to myself last year where I kind of hit that and got to a point mentally where, you know, nothing was going to stop me from going out there and playing my best. So, um, you know, I'm just really proud of him and he's going to continue to do that all year. Josh Christensen. Luca, where would you say, how would you say this team has, has grown mentally um, in learning from losses and not kind of going back to my previous question, but how have you guys basically learned from just matured, I guess, in a way. For sure. I mean, there's a couple of people on this team that were a part of a, a 19 uh, loss, you know, year. I think, you know, when you when you add up all the experience we have, we know how to bounce back from losses, and you've learned that over the years and as you get older. And even last year, you know, with all the adversity we had last year, I think you know, we had freshmen that grew up really quick, you know, in, in CJ and Joe Toussaint, um, you know, those guys. You know, going through last year for them has made them veterans and they're only sophomores. Um, so, and when you have a group like that, you understand how to bounce back. And even Patrick and guys like Keegan, you know, we were asked early in the week how they're going to bounce back from a loss or, you know, not playing the way they wanted to. You know, those guys are mature guys. Patrick's been here a year and had a prep school, prep school year out of high school. So these guys aren't high school kids. They're, they're college players. They have the right attitude. And to see Keegan and Patrick come out tonight the way they did, it's impressive and it speaks to their maturity. All right, our final question for Luca tonight comes from Jarek. Go ahead, Jarek. Go ahead, Jarek. This year, uh, compared to last year, a lot more depth. Does that take some pressure off for you um, when you're out there on the court knowing that they can produce off the bench? And just talk about you know what you've seen from them this year that you like so much. For sure. For sure. You know, we can have all our guys, you know, 
especially Jack Nungy and, and, and Jordan Bohannon, who we didn't have last year. When we have those guys, I don't know, it adds a whole different dimension to our team. Um, and, you know, especially adding Keegan and Patrick as well. You know, it's we were, we were a really good team last year, but I think sometimes, you know, all five of us had to play 40 minutes, you know, and I think having that ability, taking some pressure off when we get in foul trouble or, you know, anything like that, you know, it, it's awesome to have that kind of, you know, knowing that there's someone on the bench who can come in and produce. Um, so you know, it, it helps us. And especially when those guys can come off the bench and produce um, and they add a whole different thing to our team. You know, obviously Jack Nedge is great shooting big, stretches the floor and he's tough on the glass. You know, he can score in the post. You know, you got Keegan who crashes the glass every time, plays hard. You know, he's a Nicholas Bear 2.0. Um, you got Patrick McCaffrey who can shoot the ball. He, he's really great at the top of the press. You know, we got a lot of great players off that bench. And obviously Joe Toussaint, you know, who, who's one of the better point guards, in, you know, in America. And, and, you know, we have Jordan Bohannon as well. So have two point guards like that, um, and that just helps our team, you know, a lot. All right, Luca, thank you for your time tonight. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, Joe, thanks for joining us. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. We'll start with questions for Joe here in one second. Somebody raise their hand. David, go ahead. Yeah, Joe, what, what can you point to about tonight's defensive performance as opposed to whether it be Gonzaga or the rest of the season? Just what was kind of clicking for you guys tonight that maybe hasn't been there all year? I mean, I think we learned our lesson from Gonzaga. Um, we knew that that was an opportunity and – we didn't take advantage of it. We had a lot of mistakes um, defensively, transition. Um, so I think we really watched the film and um, took that criticism to heart and really focused on ways in which we can improve, um, realizing that we're a team that we can score the ball with anyone in the country. But at the end of the day, we got to get stops. And I think our defensive intensity all night um, was terrific. I thought CJ did a great job chasing their shooters all around. Um, everyone collectively, we were locked in um, to the game plan and we got to continue to do that moving forward. Okay, our next question comes from Chad Leistico. Hey, Joe, I know uh, Purdue hasn't always been your favorite opponent. Uh, what what uh, lessons have you taken from past games against them to, to have the game you had tonight? Yeah, honestly, um, my first two years, they've embarrassed us. Every time I played them, um, they've out hustled us, um, destroyed us on the glass every game. Um, so this was one we really wanted to come in um, and set a, set a message, you know, first game of the Big Ten on our home court um, against a, a good Purdue team. Um, so we wanted to send a message, and I think we did a good job of, um, like I said, collectively, defensively, just getting stops, limiting them to one. Um, they're a really good offensive rebounding team. So um, that was the main focus for us was getting defensive rebounds. Uh, I think overall we did a good job. Okay, further questions for Joe? Go ahead, Jarek. One thing a lot of people were talking about after the Gonzaga game was just the need to get on the glass. You came out and set the tone with seven in the first half. Was that something intentional or was it the ball finding your way? Um, how much of an emphasis did you put on yourself personally to, to hit the glass tonight? Yeah, absolutely. That's something I've always prided myself on is being a good rebounder um, and trying to help our team out in that regard, being kind of a, a bigger size guard for us. Um, and that's something the coaches really um, kind of drilled into me is you got to help us rebound this game because they got some some big dudes that Luke is going to be battling with down low. So um, if the ball is tipping out, you got to go and chase those down, things like that. So um, I just try to focus on doing that and um, securing the ball. Mark Emmert. Sorry. Um, yeah, Joe, just looking ahead a little bit. Um, I, I was at the women's game today. They, they've got nine days off before the next game. You guys are going to turn right around and play on Christmas Day on the road without your families in attendance, I guess. Uh, how do you feel about that? Um, it's, it's another game. Um, obviously, um, it's a little bit different not being home for Christmas, um, something that we're, we're used to. But at the end of the day, we came here to play basketball, and that's what we get to do. So 
Um, I'm excited for it. Um, I think we're looking forward to the opportunity of playing a good Minnesota team on the road. David? Yeah, Joe, Fran talked to us uh, just about how you guys really went in the film room and took accountability and, you know, didn't belittle anybody or anything like that. Just how much does that help having a mature team that doesn't take criticism personally, but they take it more as professionally and just trying to achieve that bigger goal? And how much just does that help you guys? Yeah, absolutely. Like I know Luca was talking about, we got a lot of mature guys on this team. Um, we've been through it. We've been um, in this program for multiple years for most guys. Um, so you got to really sit down and um, watch the film and um, look at the criticism and think about yourself on the floor and those mistakes and ways in which you can improve. And um, at the end of the day, it just comes down to the character that we have in our locker room, um, learning from those mistakes. And I think we did a good job of um, learning from the mistakes we had in the Gonzaga game and uh, fixing those for this game. Chad Leistico. Uh Hey, did you take any – I guess uh, lessons from uh, you know Michigan State uh, losing Northwestern. Uh, who else? Someone else lost the other day. Well, who was it? Illinois. Yeah, I mean, like other teams stumbling out of the gate, other contenders. Um, you guys, I'm, I'm sure you guys didn't want to start 0 1 in the Big Ten. Yeah, I mean, obviously, no one wants to start 0 1 in the Big Ten. So um, we knew that we had a good Purdue team coming in here. Like I said, um, on our home court, we got to protect that all season long. Um, and so I think we did a good job starting the, the year out with a Big Ten win and got to keep that moving along. All right, any further questions for Joe? All right, thanks, Joe. Congratulations. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. That'll uh, complete us for this evening. Appreciate it. Thank you, Steve. Yep, you bet.